Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that gaineth understanding. In West Virginia, we are dedicated to that philosophy. At every level of education, we are developing programs and expanding facilities to provide our young people with the best possible opportunity to gain understanding. We are drawing teachers from all over the country with higher than average salaries, better than average teaching conditions, and up-to-date teaching methods. And we have a state leadership concerned about meeting the educational needs of today's children. Many programs adopted by educational systems throughout the nation found their beginnings here in West Virginia. Our current programs are constantly being monitored and analyzed by educational groups from all over the country. In this report, you will see how we are creating new pathways to understanding in West Virginia. We are pleased to have this opportunity to demonstrate our progress. In West Virginia, we believe that a good education begins with quality teaching. To help establish and maintain this level of education, seven centers are located throughout the state, each staffed with full-time subject specialists. This is program PACE projects to advance creativity in education. Classroom teachers needing advice or special materials in any area of education can turn to their regional center. A curriculum librarian and an audiovisual expert are also on hand to render assistance whenever and wherever needed. These specialists work with both teachers and administrators to bring new methods, concepts, and ideas into their schools. Each center has on hand films, books, slides, and other educational materials which circulate freely to both public and non-public schools in the region. This center, located in Parkersburg, serves approximately 1,600 teachers in a six-county area. Over 36,000 students in 126 schools receive its benefits. Typical of the close cooperation between the Pace Center and the local school system, is this mathematics program developed for the Wood County School System by mathematics specialist Bill Baker. For many of us, a problem like this would cause frustration. But today, first and second grade students are solving this problem with little or no difficulty. They've adapted to a revolutionary system of mathematics instruction. It's called the Cuisinary Rods and is used in every first and second grade in Wood County. This method is based on a set of colored rods. They come in 10 different sizes and colors. They offer the learner a chance to see or to experience the abstract idea of number through both color and dimension. We've been using this system in the county since 1967. We find that with it, our first and second grade students are capable of mathematical computations normally met for the first time at the fifth and sixth grade levels. Students at this same school are participating in another pilot program, which is being studied closely by other states. At the beginning of each school year, each teacher in the program is given a prepared outline stating specific learning objectives. Then each student is tested to find out how much he knows and how much he needs to learn and how much he is capable of learning. The student then works at his own pace and is tested at the end of each unit of work. The results are automatically sent to a central computer. The following morning, a computer printout is available to the teacher. The computer relays the test results showing where the student needs reviewing. It states materials to be prepared and discussion groups necessary to complete the unit objectives. By this method, each student works on a unit of learning at his own pace and a program specifically tailored to its individual talents and needs. Project Plan assists him to schedule his next learning objective, avoiding what he already knows and what he is not ready to learn. Okay, camera one please. Truck a little to your left, about two more feet. Ready theme, and roll it. We're into the open. Ready to go on a fishing trip now, are you? It's time for our lesson. Oh, hello, boys and girls. Do you see Matthew Magic has his fishing rod and reel, and his net, and his tackle box? Boys and girls, look at this way of naming the number of Matthew Magic's fish. And you see if you can tell us. 
what that number is. These students at Grandview Elementary in Charleston are finding understanding through another specialized approach to education. They are watching one of 31 programs broadcast by WMUL-TV to schools in 11 counties in the state each week. Their school is unique in another way. There are no grade levels. There are only two sections comprising what would normally be grades one through three and four through six. Ungraded schools of this type are just beginning to appear even in the most progressive school systems in the nation. And again, West Virginia has led the way in program development. Each student here is working at his own pace and reaching his own level of understanding. Our progressive approach in the classroom, augmented by the latest educational equipment, allows our students to work both as a group and individually to pursue their interest in learning. Our building was designed and built to facilitate this method of education. In this suite, we have four teachers and one student teacher. Each area has its own ground level entrance, toilet facilities, drinking fountains, and is completely equipped with audiovisual machines. Flexible seating, planning, and instruction permit large group presentation, followed by small group or individual activities. Surprisingly, there is very little confusion here. The relaxed atmosphere enables the students to interact developing study habits regardless of their differences. Other states are adopting this method of education in elementary schools because it obviously is more effective in developing the student. We are proud to have pioneered in what is proving to be a major advancement in educational progress. This is the Instructional Material Center of Grandview Elementary. It too has been designed to maximize individual student understanding. Each school day is divided into timelines, each line becoming the property of a suite or class. Individual students or the entire class may use the center during their scheduled times throughout the day. The Instructional material Center maintains not only books, but a wide variety of slides, strip films, records, study prints, and transparencies. These students are preparing a report on Africa, its history, culture, and world importance. After reading up on this topic, collecting the available visual materials, and selecting a method of presentation, they will present their report to their class. The study habits being developed here, combined with the individual and group experiences in the classroom, are preparing these students to meet the challenges and demands of high school and college. For them, learning is and will continue to be a meaningful experience. All over the state, the sights and sounds of innovative education can be seen and heard. This is George Washington High School in Charleston, rated among the top high schools in the nation. For these students, the opportunities for understanding are everywhere. No class bells ring at George Washington. We've broken away from the idea that all subjects and types of classes need to have the same amount of time. Our class day is broken into 21, 20-minute blocks of time we call modules. We simply put together the number of modules that are necessary to do the most effective job of teaching and learning. Through the use of a computer, our students are scheduled into four types of learning situations in which we hope to bring about reaction, action, interaction, and decision-making. Here, as few as 30 or as many as 250 students can assemble for large group instruction. For action, students are scheduled into laboratories or resource centers for independent study. Interaction takes place in the small student-centered seminar where the teacher is a guide or a catalyst. Modular scheduling provides students with a certain amount of unassigned or unstructured time. Each student makes a decision as to how he will use his time. He may engage in independent study or research, go to the library, receive or give tutoring, take additional classes, 
By developing a sense of personal responsibility, our students receive not only satisfaction and confidence, but they will also have mastered a discipline for learning that should serve them well for the rapidly changing conditions of tomorrow's world. One of the best equipped schools in the nation, John Marshall High School, was designed and built around the modular scheduling system. Here at John Marshall High School in our program of modular scheduling, we utilize a 15-minute module. Our instructional day is made up of 27 15-minute modules. We have no classes lasting 15 minutes in length. What we do is put these modules together in three different modes of instruction. Our first mode of instruction is our lecture demonstration, whereby there may be as many as 300 students for two mods. Our second mode of instruction, our seminars, last three mods in length. Our third mode of instruction, our labs, last anywhere from three to six mods, depending on the subject area. Our professional staff consists of 82 teachers, four guidance counselors, and four administrators. With the help of our guidance staff, we schedule each student individually in the spring of the year. It's a good system, well accepted by our faculty, and I feel that it prepares our young people to face the challenges of our time. Vocational education in West Virginia has received similar attention. In every area, electrical, mechanical, automotive, the opportunities for understanding are available to all who want to learn. In this field, we have combined traditional teaching methods with modern techniques using sophisticated audiovisual aids programmed instruction, and the most up-to-date equipment available in every trade. Through the medium of film animation, slides, and closed-circuit television, the most sophisticated processes or systems can be broken down, simplified, and studied in detail. In this field, too, flexibility of modular scheduling enables the student to cultivate his interests and still have time to overcome his weaker subject area. This pathway leads to a house on a hill overlooking Parkersburg South High School. It's an ordinary little house in all respects but one. The entire house was designed, built, furnished, and decorated by students. The furniture is student-made. Home economic students upholstered the frames and made the drapes and curtains. Just how many builders, architects, and construction engineers this project has launched only time will tell. Meanwhile, a new crop of students is starting another project. This time, a gable roof summer cabin. Plans have already been approved, and construction is well underway. In another part of the school, students are learning a new language of the future. Here, the computer is providing understanding for students of accounting and business organization. Each student designs his own program for the computer solving the problem in a sequence of steps that proves, or sometimes disproves, the logic of his program. For students at Richwood High School, the opportunities for understanding continue even after the last class bell of the day has sounded. With their sound-equipped school bus, they can review a number of the day's lessons while traveling to and from school. School officials call it cultural in-transit education. The students refer to it as the talking school bus. In the more conventional elements of the total educational program, we think we're well ahead of the field in West Virginia. Education in West Virginia is certainly not perfect, but we think we're building new pathways to understanding everywhere. We think we're providing the best means by which our young people can find wisdom. Hopefully, they will use it to gain understanding. 